This was it for him. He tried his best to build this community just so the faces he saw would be safe from the fate that was now inevitable. But he had failed. John would take his family. The MZBs would terrorize and destroy Silver Hills. The remorse Mark felt overwhelmed him, and he was sorry, not only for failing, but that this would be the last emotion he felt before he departed this life. No, chapter 72, no, Mark told himself, I won't go out like this. He made himself calm. I want to see how many uh, sections I got. I, I've been going ahead and doing, oh, you're, you're crying out loud. I didn't. I read through the end of the book. I read, God, that's irritating. All right, I'm sorry. I didn't mark it, except for this one. Okay. <coughs> No, Mark told himself, I won't go out like this. He made himself calm down and he quit expending all his energy and oxygen trying to push John off. He pulled in as much air as he could. His vision widened back out and he began to think. John was lying across his body using the blade of his forearm to choke him. Mark's arms and legs were free, but they felt weak from the impact with the floor. He took his legs and wrapped them around John's hips. Pulling down with his legs, he was able to lessen the pressure that John was putting on his throat. This allowed him to draw in more air. He crossed his arms over his chest and inserted the four fingers on each hand into John's shirt close to the collar. He slid the hands up until one was on each side of his attacker's neck. Then he clamped down on the heavy material of the BDU blouse by making a fist and twisting his hands so that the backs were toward him. Then by simply moving his elbows out, he placed John in a chokehold twice as devastating as the one the murderer was using. John could see the instant panic in John's eyes. The MZB leader removed his arm from Mark's throat, and the karate man took in a deep, sweet breath. John started scratching and clawing at Mark's head and face. Mark pulled him down close to his own body, increasing the pressure on the Cretan's neck. From this position, John could no longer reach Mark's face to continue his sissy fight attack. John switched tactics and pushed on the floor, trying to space himself from the vice grip on his throat. Feeling the strength creep back into his extremities, Mark simply held on and made John try to pick up his weight in addition to his own. It proved to be too much for Big O. Shoot him! Shoot him! John croaked out to his associate. Mark could hear Bullseye's footsteps across the, hard, across the hardwood floor of the hall. He knew time was up for him. He only wished he could send John to hell before he was dead. He imagined that if he focused all his energy into it, he could keep choking John even after he was shot. In the past, he had focused so deeply during board breaking that he couldn't remember hitting the stacks of boards. But this would require a focus far beyond that. He didn't know if he could do it, but he would give it his all. <clears throat> he slowed his breathing so that he was taking long, deep breaths. He willed his heart to slow and focused all of his energy into his hands and arms. He was as ready as he could be. He prayed a silent prayer that he could hang on long enough to choke all of the life out of Big O. Mark saw the shadow of Bullseye positioning himself for the shot. He expected that it would be hard for the man to get a clean shot with the way he was holding John. He hoped that might give him just enough time to finish this last task. He barely heard the shot. He was so intent on the job. It was working. He didn't feel any pain, and he, could st and he still had John in the death grip. A second later, he heard another shot but he didn't feel that one either. John quit struggling and went limp. Mark thanked God that he'd sent John to his final judgment before he went to face his. Mark, Mark, are you all right? It was Mike. <laughs>